During the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, it felt like Square Enix was the absolute king of role-playing games. Like, truly consider the fact that they were making games like Final Fantasy, Xenogears, Super Mario RPG, Vagrant Story, The Secret of Mana games, and of course the Chrono series, all back-to-back -back with pretty much no gaps. These games are all still great, but looking into this time period now, it feels like they were certainly a bit more controversial. There was a lot of debate as to the best and worst Square Enix games, and Chrono Cross was one I felt like I saw people insult often. I've always been a big fan of Chrono Cross, but today what I want to do is sort of conceptually discuss this game, its controversies, and its combats, but also see what is it that's just so glorious about this remaster. Are you ready? Here we go. What's up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here. Now, please, if you could, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. It really helps out. Hopefully, this video can get a couple thousand likes. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Now, let's begin with what I feel like is the most important aspect of Chrono Cross, with certainly the fact that this game treats you like an adult. I feel like so many RPGs, especially in recent years, they completely hold your hand. They're so afraid of making a boss difficult or making an idea in the game actually a bit more heavy. This game is a doozy. It combines some truly beautiful art and some epic boss fights on top of themes about destiny, fate, and the fact that sometimes it's your duty to die. I love Chrono Cross a lot, which is why actually I bought it when it initially came out. I've played through it multiple times on different systems. I still have my strategy guides. Like this game is such a great time. But the biggest thing about this new version of it that I have to say is the best is holy heck did they manage to finally clean up the rather murky art. Every single piece of this game has been spruced up and modernized graphically. Now, the difference between a remake and a remaster is that what they've gone in is basically just upscaled and cleaned up a lot of the parts of this that were very, very blurry. I mean, and I do mean every part of this. Straight up character illustrations look fantastic. The character models are completely redone and look very, very good. But more than that, I've always thought the character models themselves looked good even in the original versions. I'm actually most impressed by the redone monster modules. The monster models have a simply impressive amount of detail when you realize that there's individual quills on an enemy's back, or if you see like a fish swimming in the air, there's almost this little tiny subtle current to the individual feathers on them. It's crazy that this is the original assets from 1999, and yet it looks so modern. They've even gone so far as to redo a lot of the fonts and menus to make them much more legible. Now, here's what's interesting, if you want the original Chrono Trigger experience, all of that is still in the code as well. You can turn off or turn on any part of this, literally all of it. You can make it have the HD models or the old school models. You can change the font to be the original pixels or this new cleaned up HD. All of it is completely something you can switch on and off whenever you want. You can also affect screen zooms. You can make it more full, more widescreen, more stretched, or me personally, I don't mind the letterbox, so I do that. Now, speaking of changes, the one aspect of this that to me I feel like I absolutely did not like is that they have made the combat a lot more simplified. It feels like enemies have less health, the characters are doing more damage, and the reason this is sort of a drawback to me is that Chrono Cross already had a relatively low bar of entry when it comes to difficulty. It's pretty simply to breeze through this game even without doing any random battles because you can just go boss, 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 plot, plot, plot. But quickly, let's talk about the combat system in case you haven't had a chance to play it. So, Chrono Cross is based on this elemental system. As you're exploring these different maps, swamps, and dungeons, you're going to occasionally see these creatures that are just wandering back and forth. When you bump into one, it initiates a battle. Now, when the combat begins, there's actually this really interesting stamina system where the harder the attack, the more damage it deals, sometimes to a big degree, but it also has a lower accuracy. You get seven points of stamina for every single turn, but basically bigger attacks can consume three or four stamina right off the top. So it's always that sort of risk versus reward. Do I want to try and do a bigger attack that's going to eat up my stamina and be slightly less accurate, or do I want to do a bunch of weak attacks in quick succession? As you start bashing on these foes, you also build up an elemental attack meter, which is basically your magic. I've always really enjoyed the fact that each fight in Chrono Cross 
across feels so necessary. None of this feels like just filler. None of this is to slow you down. It feels like your characters are truly battling to try and get to that next gigantic encounter, and these foes are there to defeat you along that way. But this does bring me to something that I'm still the most fascinated about even years later, there is not a standard leveling system in this. There's not experience points and stuff. Instead, as you fight enemies, you get occasionally base stat increases. These can do things to up your damage, your health, or your mana. And you keep these effects, which makes it so that while you're going through this game, you can't just fight random guys over and over and over again to become extremely overpowered. You actually have this set threshold for strength that exists from fight to fight. Now, I like this because it makes it where whenever you defeat that next big boss, you get a big and substantial upgrade to your characters permanently. It really conveys this epic weight to the fact that every single time you defeat one of these major foes, it feels like you've actually done it. You have changed as a character during the course of this battle. Now, the new thing they've added to this is basically you can now turn on if there's going to be fights or not. You can turn off so that while you're exploring, there isn't going to be random enemies slowing you down. You can straight up turn off these extra battles. Now, the other aspect of it is that a lot of these fights just feel easier. You can now actually just turn it on so there's an auto battle function. You can just grind by setting everybody to do the default attacks that you think are the most efficient, zigzag around and clear out a dungeon, and then just explore and check out all the secrets to find more items, which is efficient, but it sort of feels detrimental to the idea of these classic 90s and 2000s RPGs, which is sometimes that time equals reward. There is also just some straight up battle enhancements, which are pretty much like cheat codes that can be turned on to just pretty much one shot a lot of the enemies and sometimes even bosses. Now, I don't have a problem with the idea of making this game a more streamlined experience, but I kind of enjoy that struggle, that fight. I mean, I grew up playing these games and a lot of times these 90s RPGs, these 2000s RPGs, what they did most is they really made it feel like you are a hero, you are an adventurer, you have to figure this out or you're going to die a terrible death. Now, this does bring me to the story. Now, I'm not going to talk spoilers, but I want to talk just a bit about the idea of Chrono Cross because as somebody that grew up with it, I really do enjoy these games a lot, both Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. Whereas Chrono Trigger was focused on bouncing around to different time periods, trying to go to the ancient past or the far-flung future. I've always thought that Chrono Cross was more ballsy because it actually tries to make it where you're going between different realities at the same point. A timeline where you may be dead, a timeline where you're alive, a timeline where your friend becomes a great poet, a timeline where everybody's become an abysmal failure. Some of your friends may be a terrible street thief in one reality and a rich prince in the other. It's such a brilliant and honestly adult display of the fact that we are in many ways a product of our environment. If somebody changes a key feature of you, you're going to end up being a better or worse person because of it. And I like the fact that they tell such a hard story at times. But this does bring me to the biggest detriment and the biggest complaint I have about Chrono Cross, which is going to piss off some fans. There is way too many characters in this game. There are 44 playable characters in Chrono Cross. 44! That is a ton. Now, these people, a lot of them are optional, and you can't get all of them. Basically, a lot of times there are branching paths where you have to try and recruit somebody or turn somebody away. And a lot of these people are hidden characters, people that can actually be off in some side path or connected to a side quest. And if you don't find them, then you don't get them. Some of these characters are just exceptionally well-written with deep dialogue, crazy motivations. A, a lot of the stuff is really kind of what impressed me the most. And as an adult going back through these games, I'm even more just taken aback by how much attention they put into each part of the dialogue. But my issue is that some of these people suck. Like, with 44 playable characters, some of these people have almost no real good lines. Some of the people are exactly the same almost. They just have different character skins or different names. Some of the people have just, like, weird accents. Like, there's a talking dog that talks like this all the time. 
I, I don't know. Like stuff like that is very weird. It feels like it's just trying to be big in scope. It reminds me when all those video games were coming out that would just say 100 hours on the box, even if they're not really 100 hours long. Now, these 44 different characters do affect the game. They do change a lot of the narrative and they can help with the 12 different endings that are actually hidden inside of Chrono Cross. If you're just thinking about buying this game because you want something that can soak up some hours, Cross will do that. Cross is a huge undertaking. If you want to just beat it once, you can do that. But I actually enjoy the fact that you're constantly wondering, did I make the right choice? Did I go down the right path? Did I do the right thing? In these very, very complex and oftentimes dark situations. Now, the last part of this we got to talk about is the aspect of this that's technically completely new. This is something that has never existed before in America, which is called Radical Dreamers. There was technically a game that was released between Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross that's sort of been lost to time, pun intended, which is called Radical Dreamers. Now this is a text-based adventure, which means that instead of having graphics and art and you know your typical style of gameplay, it's all just explained to you, saying things like, oh no, you're going into a spooky crypt. Do you want to try and bring a lantern or run away? Now it's actually kind of good because the writing itself in it is cool, you get a chance to do different dialogue. You have to try and do combat via text. So sometimes you'll get to attack a specific body part of like a goblin who's trying to grab you. And even though this seems a little bit strange or archaic, it's really good. And until now, this has never been translated into English officially. Some fans had found a way to like basically download it and translate it years ago. You could find versions of it on the internet, but this is the first time where the official Square Enix team has found a way to localize it and it's just thrown in here for free of charge. As a fan of Chrono Cross and as a huge fan of Chrono Trigger, to have a real version of this that I can play is absolutely epic. Every part of this package is worth it. The fact that this is $20, it is worth every single penny. If you're looking for a good RPG, if you're looking for something that's going to challenge you, this is that. While the battles may not be hard, you are going to sit here scratching your head and genuinely just wondering about the meanings of morality for a long time to come. Okay, so we've heard a little bit of bad and a little bit of good, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Chrono Cross Remastered a 9 out of 10. You guys rock, and if you want to see more reviews, I have a lot of stuff that's currently in the works. In fact, if you haven't watched it already, I did do a big review for House of the Dead Remake, which you can watch right there at the end of the video. You guys rock. Thank you again. Please like the video. It seriously helps out. But please, the biggest thing I need you to do is keep dreaming. Oh my god, it's so trippy to be playing through this game again in HD. Oh. Do this for every game. Bring forward Chrono Trigger to consoles. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.